St. Joseph's Institute of Lokatia. Consultant, OAP, and former Director General of RT, which is now under the Chief Minister. School of RT, I have done the Kumna Management of RT, different in this scenario. So. AG Perspective Planning, Measure of AK Chairman. Participants from the industry and OFB and other offices. It is indeed a proud privilege for me to address this August gathering on the modernization perspective of the Regiment of Artillery. I would like to start by recounting the stated vision of the Regiment of Artillery as a quote modernize the artillery to enhanced integrated network. ISR and firepower capacities so as to attack by firepower in all stages of battle in conjunction with all other combat power resources for the domination of the battlefield, thereby achieving favorable conditions for decisive defeat of the enemy. So, what are the key words in this? Integrated network ISR and firepower capacities being the first. The second, achieving favorable conditions. On the battlefield. This in modernization translates to a focus on a system of system firepower assets, persistent surveillance and precise target acquisition, capability, and as it was brought out, network fire control and observation systems, together with precision munitions. The shape and contours of the future battlefield, coupled with the rapid pace of technology, is what is the drivers for RT modernization. The modern technical advancements that have taken place over the years have made a paradigm shift in the development of the weapon systems. And not only current today, or including the rocket systems, is a complex fusion of various technologies and capabilities. There are key capabilities which are associated with the development of the system. The gun system, which achieves key capabilities such as long range, Accuracy, consistency, rate of fires, ease of operations, maintenance, maneuverability. The improvement in metallurgies and development of composite materials have led to armament which assist in manufacture of lighter guns, thereby enhanced ranges, as also tactical and strategic mobility. The autonomous sighting and positioning system with onboard computers, electro optic and electronic sighting systems, inertial navigation system based. Uh, aiming devices, ballistic crossfires, muzzle velocity measurement radars, all provide focus on accuracy and consistency of fire. The self-propulsion capability integrated with the system allows the guns to operate in semi-autonomous, probably autonomous modes, giving it a true shoot-as-shoot -shoot capability with increased survivability in the intense battlefield. Hence, today the gun and the rocket system can be considered a system of system but this effective employment or uh, in the battlefield of these system to system fire platforms necessitates integration with other elements of fire direction and control organizations, observation, ISR assets and resources, which by themselves are systems. Not to forget the improvement that will be required in the emission systems. So modernization of gun as a system integrated with other systems becomes the driver now for developing contemporary capabilities all across to achieve a holistic modernization. I am glad to state today that modernization of artillery but in this context is where I am today. The induction of heli portable ultralight horses, self-propelled track cannon buzzers, indigenous Dhanush gun systems and saram is to be completed by 2020. The contract for procurement of the towed gun system is likely to be concluded soon and the ATARs are being put through PSQI trials later this year. As far as rocket systems are concerned, three regiments of Pinaka multi-rocket, multi-launcher rocket systems are operationalized and the delivery of the fourth is in progress. The contract for the next six Pinaka regiments is in advanced stage of conclusion and the induction is likely to start by 2022. For future procurements, it is desirable to have a standard caliber gun for all terrain conditions for reasons of operational flexibility as well understood and logistic convenience. With the development of infrastructure across the borders, this is largely possible except in certain pockets of hybrid areas, deserts and semi-desert terrains. With the terrain driven factors such as with regard to mobility, high angle fire, 
need to engage targets on the reverse slope, etc., would need to be considered. So this is what is what I'll be looking for in the future. I'll come back to it a little later. However, we must know that a fire system is as good as the ammunition of its fires. And hence, research and development today is focusing on improvements in shells for longer ranges, guided munitions, increased lethalities, sensor field munitions, etc. Improving the charge systems by having modular charge systems and improving the fuses. The potency of the firepower which it provides hinges on the ability to deliver this shell of the payload accurately as possible and thereafter on the lethality. Accordingly, this requirement is driving the technology to develop guiding systems, to use the RD shells of the payloads. Such guiding systems provide us with the advantage of higher kill probability, minimum collateral damage, and decrease ammunition expenditure on specific targets. Based on this tactical consideration, what do we as a management of artillery looking at? We are looking at area ammunitions for area targets where dispersion is desirable. However, this is, though this is the bulk requirement, the need is to enhance its lethality by using explosives or possessing higher vessels, using higher strength steels, titanium alloys, or composites for shell cells with uh, shells, walls which will give it better vitality. We require area precision evidence with a CD of less than 50 meters at all ranges against targets which are narrow or compact. We require precision measure with less than 20 meters accuracy at all ranges against pinpoint targets. There's a requirement of brilliant ammunitions, random resistance for the projectiles for enhanced ranges and dual purpose conventional munitions. In our context, the endeavor is to produce all this indigenously. But what we need to consider in this is firstly that all our wonderful type of gun systems should have a common ammunition system. The indigenous manufacturers, manufacturers therefore need to look at making up the current existing deficiency as also keep pace with the induction of the gun systems, thereby ensuring that the minimum emission levels are always maintained. Secondly, is the aspect which is very critical is the requirement of different components today having different shell types using the fuses, shells and this. This needs to be resolved so the ammunition as a system has a standard shell type. Further, to achieve the precision capability, the Excalibur ammunition and precision guided kits have been procured. However, these are export. This ammunition gives you the capability to strike deep with precision, but today only with the UNH. While the debate between the percentage of conventional versus precision ammunition will keep going on, the requirement is an operational necessity. The need is to develop this indigenously. We have already taken a step forward in this direction by initiating projects like post collection fuses, thermally guided munitions, improved vulnerable thigh MM shells through making India initiative for the same. The industry needs to come forward for the same. In case of rocket systems, we are moving in the right directions as far as development of guided long range precision ammunition is concerned. Guided enhanced range rockets, area attack ammunition type 1 and type 2 are being developed indigenously for the Pinaka rocket system. ADM type 1 has already under, undergone trial evaluation and the guided enhanced range rocket is planned to be trial evaluation. So, this is where we need to focus and the OMP needs to. Take it up and take on the transport technology with DRDO, the consumption of DRDO and DRDO waste. Coming down to the aspect of control of fire. This is a challenge of integration of new gun systems with Shakti. The integration is an operational imperative dependent on the technological handshake between the two systems. The development of the communication interface units is being undertaken by Delhi, which holds the property rights and this development is getting delayed to an extent of the trials of the new systems. The challenge of Shakti is further increased by the various versions of ETCs, software upgrades and the CIEs that is the communication interface units. The ETC marks type now being inducted are not compatible with the older versions of ETC 1 and 2 which are nearing obsolescence and need to be changed. Similar is the challenge in the communication interface units. Hence, there is a constant challenge to keep up with the technological upgrades and maintain currency as well as a compatibility across the system. Not that the standing the same, the case for procurement of communication interface units for the ultralight hydrogen 
and case like nine measures are in progress, as is the case for Pinaka weapon system by the respective industry. Let me now highlight another aspect which is regard to the mix of equipment. The operational and terrain specific requirements of the Indian Army led to reduction of a mix of vulnerable terrain systems. Though this has reduced our dependence on a single vendor and its financial prudence, it has led to a large inventory of nine different varieties of 105 mm gun systems of different calibers and RT profile. The timelines of production of these systems is such that the present inventory of equipment will continue to be in service for the next two decades. It is therefore important to note that uh, less bofors, all other systems are nearing the end of their service life and need to be replaced. Keeping them up for next 20 years means that there is a requirement of keeping the production lines running along with the new gun system that has been done so as to cater for their spares management as also make up the building stocks with regard to WWR. The resultant test in the future would therefore be with regard to maintenance of this or winter equipment along with current equipment that is being inducted. Another aspect that merits consideration is the gun system being produced by multiple vendors and lack of commonality between these various gun systems. A case in point is the Pinaka rocket system being produced by Tata Powers and Elinti. Similar is the case with ATAX, which will be produced by Bharat Force and DPCA. Dhanush is likely to have different power packs. The INS is different in each gun system. The ammunition is based on BFCS or char packs. The dimension of this challenge enlarges it with the associated issues of equipment, spare management, engineering support in various terrains broadly separated around our borders. So what is the way forward? We need to look at commonality between the equipment which must be ensured and planned through indigenization, especially in terms of common spares and MLRS etc. This should also be a key factor in deciding and considering the replacement for the medium guns that are nearly the end of their service life in the future. A word about indigenization. The mantra for the regiment of artillery has been modernization through digitalization. Out of the seven types of one double five mm gun systems that are being inducted into the regiment of artillery or are in the process of being inducted, only two, K9 Vajra and the Ultra Light Voyagers, have been procured globally. The three gun systems, Dhanush, Saram, and Eta, are indigenously manufactured. The towed gun system, though being contracted globally, will have more than two thirds of the quantity being manufactured by OFB through transport technology and should be considered as an indigenous gun system. The seventh is the mounted gun system and the replacement of the existing vintage guns, which will have indigenous solutions. The only rocket system under induction, Pinaka, is being manufactured indigenously. For the global systems also today, the indigenous production of space and gradual increase in percentage of indigenous content is being undertaken. These are small but definite steps to development of our defense industrial base. Regiment of artillery has been a major stakeholder in the making of India campaign. We as an arm are intimately involved with OSP, DRDO, private industry from the inception stage of procuring a gun ammunition system. Involvement of knowledgeable case officers whether as school of artillery or in a direct trade that act as an interface between the user and the developer under the supervision of School of Artillery and RT Directorate has resulted in fructification of a number of projects. You can see it across the projects that are across all arms and services. I would like to assure the audience that RT Directorate will continue to work with the PSUs, the private industry, to further the making of their policy. Let me now briefly uh, touch something which is out of the program but it's not been discussed today and that is put few, uh, a few thoughts on the modernization of ISR architecture and systems. Seamless battlefield transparency is critical for effective application of firepower resources. Induction of Swati, WLR, upgraded Loros, and ELM have substantially added to our service capabilities. How about this is a tactical level? Procurement of medium attitude, uh, long range, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, RPAs, HAILS, and launch of satellite SPS program are increasing our surveillance capabilities. The need today is to upgrade both these quantitatively and qualitatively. 
We upgraded DNF and Loros computers on the best tactical level resources to enable the shooters to deviate the enemy at the operational charge of death. It is an essential requirement of runway independent short range RPLs capable of 80 to 90 kilometers per inch. This needs to be developed indigenously by the industry. With the ability to engage targets at longer range, it comes the need to acquire targets precisely. This capability void still exists in, in the country. No agency presently possesses the capability to provide target coordinates to that desirable level of accuracy for the uh, target seeking or coordinate seeking level systems. The industry again is the looking for this. For the counter bombardment and counter mobility capabilities, the indigenous Swati and WLR is a success story of collaboration between Indian Army and DRDO and Belgium. The WR is being operationally validated daily in the ceasefire formations. To take this ahead, a lightweight WR has been developed from mountain, mountain formations and is under control. Further on the same lines is the integrated and networked ISR architecture requiring robust communications to enable real time passage of information and information analysis capability to include image archiving, chain detection, common GS platforms and ground exploitation equipment. While the improvement in surveillance system is undertaking, all other is lacking. This needs to be taken forward. In the end, I would like to say that RT technology seminar could not have been organized at a better time when we are the cusp as a regiment of artillery of transiting from a vintage to state of art government. Indian artillery today is in challenging and exciting times. The modernization is progressing at an appropriate pace. In the process of modernization, we are in migrant technology and are undergoing a metamorphosis wherein we are graduating from being manual to automatic, analog to digital, and conventional to smart. All this combined with the enhanced battlefield transparency will aid transformation of artillery into a modernized force. I am confident that the RT modernization process that includes enhancement in both quantitative and qualitative capability is geared to meet all the challenges of quantums of threats of future countries. Gentlemen.